Hi, it's Luis Fernandez here with the uh, LF Group with Berkshire Hathaway. We're doing a little live interview to this morning with one of my associates here, Sandra Matrakis. Uh, I've known Sandra for, oh my gosh, I think maybe eight or nine years now, Sandra. I think we go back that, that far. Ten. <laughs> Ten. Ten years, oh my gosh. And uh, so I, I had asked her to see if... Um, if she would join us this morning, because, because I wanted to uh, introduce her to to all of you, and 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 I, you know, she's a professional realtor. She's very dedicated in what she does, and and also I think it's important to get some insight in terms of what what we do as agents on a regular basis in terms of tr trying to solve and, and care for our customers' uh, uh, real estate issues. So, Sandra. Uh, thank you so much for, for for joining us this morning on a Friday. Thank you for inviting me. Happy Friday. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I mean, I think one of the questions that I had that I've been thinking about asking you is, you know, this business is so crazy and it's, and it's so off the charts sometimes. Uh, people don't really understand what we go through as, as agents out there. I mean, what, what made you fall in love to be, you know, into this career and become a realtor? I'm going to make it quick and short, okay? But um, I'm going to go back in my 30s. I was a very, I was in a comfort zone and it tugged me in my heart at 31. I wanted to be a realtor, but because I was in that comfort zone from nine to five, I didn't take it serious, but it kept tugging. Right. So when I bought my first house, I was moving into a new County back then we didn't have the MLS where they could share the property. So my realtor, um, in central Florida had all these properties lit, you know ready for us to 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 go view and she was so amazing to get us through that process and educating us step by step that finally when i we closed and i was finally in my new home i just sat there and thought about what a wonderful thing to do you know to make somebody's dream come true and since i was in sales i said why not why can i do this for someone else and that's originally why I wanted to be a realtor. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not knowing, not yeah. knowing everything else that comes along because they make it look so easy, but it really isn't. So with that said, I am happy that I took that step. I'm happy that I'm able to help, you know, my customers, our customers fulfill their dreams. And that's what we do. And sure. yeah, we make it look easy because we do it right. You know, we take them step by step and the process makes it a lot easier for them. But again, you know, it all depends on, you know, I got the passion for it. So that's why I became a real, you know, it's funny when I, when I was, when I had my own brokerage company and I, and, uh, and I, uh, I, I moved and I decided to, to move over to, uh, actually the first company I worked with was with Keller Williams, which is a very fine real estate company. Um, that's where I think we met. And yes. I mean, you were, you were uh, uh, the manager or office manager, assistant secretary to the to the broker there at, at the office. And I used to see you running around all, the, all day long. And I said, oh, my gosh, you're always so helpful and so efficient. And I said, Sandra, you should really, you know, get into this business. You know, I mean, I think and you and you saw us working hard and you saw and I think you, you got that bug as well. Yeah. And, uh, and then from one thing to the next, you got into, you know, I guess you took my advice and and then, then we, of course, we went separate ways for, for some some years. You uh, went to other, join other teams and other companies, and I was always, hey, Sandra, you know, if you're available. I'd like to bring you on board. And then just things never happened the way it was at the time. But and then, they brought us together with our previous company, and 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 so it was meant to be. <laughs> it was meant to be. It was meant to be. But I always followed your career. You know, you're very successful. You always always were a very hard worker and, and very dedicated. Very hard. So I really appreciated that. Those are the type of and people I appreciate it. Yeah. I appreciate it from you, but on, on a on a small note, and very big note, um, you know that since ten years ago, since I met the LRF group, I always wanted to be on your team. Oh, thank Finally. you. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I, yeah. we always wanted you to be on the team too, uh, actually. And uh, but I, it's 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 amazing. I mean, you know, I think professionals know like-minded professionals, and I think that's what this business is all about. It's like almost in, in any other career as well. You work with the same same caliber of people on a regular basis, time and time again. Uh, yeah. Let me ask you something. Um, what you know, we're always trying to self, you know, examine ourselves in terms of, of, of agents and in terms of how we can be better. What's 
I mean, I mean, I mean, what would you say would be is your strength as as a realtor in, in terms of providing, um, you know, uh, that you know the, the services to your clients? Oh, most important, the most important for me is organization. I think that's my strong, one of my strong skills, mm -hmm. my follow-up skills, my promptness. I, I do not take advantage of um, time. I make sure that I'm, I'm a calendar person. So if I don't have it on calendar, it doesn't count, right? So even if I have to go a half an hour to go meet a client for a half an hour, that's on my calendar. If I have to call them, that's on my calendar. So I think a strong, my strongest um, skills are my follow-up, my organization, because without that, you don't have a business. Sure, right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think that's one of my strongest, um, you know, strengths. And you know, follow up and organizations. And conversely, you know, I want to ask you the, the follow up question. So what and so what would you think they do? Are there areas that you that we can that you can improve upon as in terms of getting more proficient as, a, as an agent and providing a better customer relationship uh, with your uh, uh, in terms of experience <laughs> with your customers? I know that the well, tough questions I asked, but I, I knew I knew you weren't ready for that one. But I wanted to. Well, well uh, you want you want the honest truth because you guys tell me, you know, I don't give up. So exactly. <laughs> I'm yeah. always going to be constantly, I can be one of, I am one of those professional realtors that just because I did not, um, you know, um, I was not able to provide the service versus buyer or, or seller, uh, for whatever reasons, I always keep up. There's always a reason why that didn't happen. So you both, everybody knows on the team that I do not give up just because it didn't happen yesterday. I think that me being a little bit more assertive, mm -hmm. calling, calling, finding out every week, every every two weeks, just following up. You, it would, it takes two years. If it takes two years to get them, you know, build trust. I mean, that's what I'm doing, and that's what I've learned over these past two years, with you know, with everything that's going on, being part of your your group. That I know that follow up has helped me tremendously. So, I think I answered your question, yeah, or no. I jumped. To no, another one. I think you did. I think I think that one thing I see you all the time. You, you, I mean, the follow-up skills set here in our business is important, right? Because a lot of, a lot of realtors to make that initial contact, and after that, they go, you know, they go, you know, they go to sleep on, you know, in terms of the prospect. And I think it's important to be engaged on a regular basis uh, with with uh, with your clients and and prospecting, and that's the name of the business. I know, and you lead the team in that aspect. And you, I mean, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I think we. You know, you, you know, I mean, the, the, the team is constantly always lead generating, but on, on those two dates, we're constantly, you are uh, heading them and, and making, generating calls and, and reaching out to, especially on a tight market like this, which we have to, we're working with so many buyers from out of state and, you know, we have our, our team also up in New York, our office up there, and they're calling us, hey, we need more properties, we need more listings, and, and it's like a constant challenge and i think you meet those challenges uh by by reaching out and um and doing the lead generation yeah. lead generation is very important i mean it doesn't matter our group our synergy in our group is uh, amazing like i mentioned yesterday i was you know showing i had to i was not i was not able to go out and canvas core gables but it looked like they had an amazing time they connected with the people in core gables and that's that's the idea. Let the uh, let the neighborhood know that we're here to help them if they need the help, or you know, just an advice or just a marketing analysis doesn't mean anything. But the the point is that you got to continue with that relationship because everybody says we say if it doesn't happen now, what's most important after the transaction is to continue that that relationship. So we start with lead generation and take it to all the way through until we accomplish what they need what their needs are basically right right i think that uh, that's very true let me ask you what's what's one of the you know uh, episodes that you had that you've encountered that you've had to overcome in terms of i don't know in the workplace maybe with a maybe trying to we saw an issue with a customer or maybe even with one of our local vendors that we you know that we use it could be the mortgage industry the uh it could be the title company the inspections i mean it, what, what a little scenario that you that you uh that you came across that that was that that you had to to resolve to be able to get to the closing table. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so 
Um, <laughs> all right, so what did I have to resolve? Okay, I'll, I'll tell you one, uh, first time. My first year as a realtor, it was amazing. I learned so much. I learned what was, what is called an FHA 203K, okay? Mm. So imagine a new realtor, me, not having any guidance whatsoever, just going with the flow. I had a home that was, um, that had to, um, it was a 203K finance. So what that means is that there has to be a HUD specialist involved. Right. Um, I was against the seller that she was very attached to the home. She would not permit for any inspections. Needless to say, she was selling the place. I put, you know, I put her on the contract. It was very difficult um, to make appointments. Um, so I, I honestly had to, you know, as a, as a rookie back then, it was very intimidating to sit down and kind of just, you know, lay it on the table, like they say, you know, be stern, be assertive, you know, at, at the beginning, you know, it's scary, right? Right. It, it, whoever says it's not as a new rookie is lying. So at that point, I had to make it a point that, um, you know, she either cooperates or, you know, I would have to, you know, find a way of how to, um, you know, release this contract and basically fire her as a client because she was making it impossible. But once I came in and put that little fear aside and came in a, a little bit more like confident, I was able to succeed the steps that were needed to take in order to close this, this, um, this uh, loan, this transaction. And it was a very long transaction because it's a lot, a lot of steps in between, not just the bank, but we also had to hire a HUD specialist that had to go out on a Sunday morning at seven o'clock in the morning. So after all that obstacle, I was able to, I succeeded, I closed, everybody was happy, but it was tough to have somebody go against the grain when you're trying to sell uh, their home that they asked for, you know? So I think that I accomplished something very big in my first year. That yeah. was hard. No, I think, I think that, that sometimes the, the public doesn't understand how difficult the steps and the multiple steps that we have to take to to get from first of all getting a contract executed to then to getting to the closing table there are so many layers that you have to like peel back right and mm -hmm. that's a difficult process i uh, uh, you know the they you know it it's you you're only as good and i say this all the time you know, of course you hear this on, on my on my meetings we're only as good as the agent that crossed the table or we're only as good to a certain extent uh, as the title company that we're having to be using or the inspector or the appraiser for that matter, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, so it's important that uh, for, the, for the customer that they understand that and that we build the expectations accordingly. And that's why it's important that I think that the, that, that the customer has to really find himself in interview, uh, uh, you, know, you know, realtors out there, just like anything else, you, you know, you're, it's, it's a um, it's a financial decision. Uh, as much more like a medical decision. I mean, if you have a, a surgery or a procedure, you're not I mean, perhaps not necessarily going to interview with the first doctor. You may have have a second opinion. And I think the same thing needs to be applicable too when you're thinking about buying or selling a home. There are there are a lot of good realtors out there, and there are some that not not as good as others. So I think it's important that uh, we that, that message is, is conveyed properly. So I think the consumer then has options and they can, they can weigh themselves and, and decide which way they want to go. But um, that's why I think this interview, this type of conversation, I think it's important to enlighten the, the, the public in terms of, uh, of all the difficult steps that we have to take to get, get a contract even executed to the, to the closing table. It's, it's, uh, it's not an easy process, right? Especially in today's market, you know, it's, it's very important to have um, your professionalism, read the MLS, follow the directions, make contact with that agent, communicate in order to have, you know, any kind of relationship, not just with your customers, but with the realtors on the other end. It's very important. Right. At least, I mean, I think that's everybody. What I see the common denominator here in our industry is that we all want the same thing, right? We all want to get to the closing table, the buyer, the seller, and the realtors. That's our job, right? 
So in order to do that, we all have to be professional, communicate, follow up, and help these, these our customers with this process, basically holding their hand, taking them step by step in order for them not to feel all the bumps and grinds that we do behind the scenes. Right. You, right? No, I agree. Let me ask you this. What, I mean, in that, in that token, um, I mean, what does um, uh, success look to you in terms of, uh, in, in, I mean, in terms of a professional uh, level? Is it success means that when you find that right home to, I mean, for your customers or when you sell that, that, that home for your, for your sellers? I mean, what does success uh, uh, looks, looks to you? Well, my motto, you know my motto, right? You got to love what you do and love the people you work with in order to see the magic happen, right? But the most successful point through this whole process of being a real estate agent is that I provided the same feeling that I received the day that I bought my home. That mm. feeling is priceless, you know? And I'll never forget that Amy, that was her name, Amy in Melbourne. So that is success for me. I want them now, you know, I want them just to feel that happiness and also continue my relationship. Not only did I accomplish that, um, but I also built a relationship with my customers. So at the end of the day, that's success for me, that's as a, you know. That's very nice. Yeah, exactly. You want to convey that, that, that feeling and that they've, you've done a really good job and they're happy and it, because, you know, you're really, you're integrated part, part of their lives because you're, you're finding a home you know, uh, in, in a place where they're going to live, you know, perhaps for many years and raise a family and, and, and what have you. And and you're always going to be connected with them in one way or the other. And they're always going to remember you in one way or the other, hopefully a positive way. So always in a positive way yeah. <laughs> so far. <laughs> but yeah, to me, that's success. You know, I mean, let's not, you know, we, we all have to work, right? We sure. all have to work. We have to make a living, but you really have to love what you do. And you really do have to love the people you work with. So right now I'm in a place of, you know, I have, I'm in, in a great group, the LRF group. I'm in a great firm, Berkshire Hathaway. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm, I'm surrounded by pro professionals, you know, you know, people that really support me. We have a great group that supports me, you know, supports us, all of us, we support each other. So I'm very happy right now with where I am. And that also passes on to my clients. So they see the happiness in me and <laughs> people ask me, how do you do it? How do you keep yourself happy? It's because I love it. I have passion for it. So I, again, the success, the success is happiness for my, my customers as well as for me. Yeah. So, so you think that that uh, the relationship that, that that the LRF group has with Berkshire Hathaway, and and how important do you think that uh, that that kind of, that nexus is with with the Northeast Corridor? You know, because you know, for the last couple of years, so many people from the Northeast have been coming down here from New York, you know, Connecticut, New Jersey. How is that? How is that interplay in terms of helping your customers down here, or or or? Well, that is that that that's an amazing point, Louis, because um, they are our, our customers, my customers. Um, I have I have clients in New York. So guess what? I'm, I'm so happy to announce to them that, hey, listen, we're, we're duly licensed and we have our team extended out to New York. And with that said, they also contact us and they ask us, you know, like in between New York you know, the connection between New York and us, we, we, we can, it feels, it feels good to know that we have somebody in New York taking care of our customers, as well as, you know, the New Yorkers coming over here from, from New York coming over here. So we, we have that synergy that we, we vetted our customers. We know that we're dealing with somebody. We love the fact that we're duly licensed in New York. So it makes it so much easier to let them know that, Hey, we're here for you. Um, you know, every state is different. Um, we do have questions that, you know, um, it's good to know how they work in New York versus how we work here because they're very different. So when, when we were able to, when we're all able to sit down New York, New York office and us together, 
um, and we explain to them the difference between the way they work there because it is and you can you know sure. put a into that but um it works out great because being able right to... now i'm being invited to new york to go see a, a brown house a brownstone yeah. in may isn't right. that amazing <laughs> so it, well i'm actually leaving monday i'm going to be up there for i'm going to be up in our office up there for a few days i'm going for a real estate conference so uh, maybe i'll do a, a little live video when, while i'm up there but uh listen uh to um let me ask you this uh just to wrap things up a little bit what um You've got a property that uh, that you, that you want to talk about. Uh, I think I've got a I've got it up here. I'm gonna I'm gonna. Okay. Well, it's it's actually a vacant lot. Uh -huh. I have. there so so therefore um if anybody's looking for a lot in palmetto bay reach out to the lrf group and i always say uh log into www the lrf group.com you'll find a lot there and it's located at 17214 southwest 92nd avenue palmetto bay Beautiful, awesome. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if they so if they want to get in contact with you directly as well, with the, uh, your number. Um... My number is seven eight six four zero five two zero nine two. Perfect. Or you can email me at. Well, this is a long one. I'll skip that one because <laughs> that's a long one. But if anybody wants, should I just say it? Sandra Matrak is at b h h s florida realty dot com. All right. Well, Sandra, listen, thank you so much for taking your busy time this morning, uh, sitting down and talking with us and us getting getting to know you a little bit better. Of course, I know you very well, but I think it was important that uh, our viewers uh, appreciate your talent and your skill set. And uh, we'll do this again very soon. Can you give me a moment? Sure. Because I want to do, do something. Is sure. that okay? Sure, absolutely. Go ahead. <laughs> you know what I'm doing. Yeah, she so always likes to take pictures. Of course, she's a realtor. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lewis. All right, it was Sandra. great speaking to you. Have a great weekend. You too. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.